Linux process control can be implemented using the commands ps, kill, bg, fg, jobs, nice, renice, grep, and top. Using these commands, any background daemon or foreground process can be effectively managed. The ps command. The process command lists running processes and daemons. It is similar to task manager in Windows. Common ps options are ps by itself displays processes running in the current shell. With the E option, it displays running daemons. With the F option, it displays processes with full options. With the L option, it would list more information on those processes. Say we were to combine E and F together, that would display all processes and daemons on all TTYs. A would list all processes that run on terminals. X would list all processes that do not run on terminals. Say we were to combine A, U, and X, that would list all processes running on or off terminals, and it would format the results with additional information, similar to a long listing. Below are some of the fields displayed when you run the ps command with the f option. The uid is the user id, the pid is the process id, the ppid is the parent process id, c is the cpu's utilization by the process, f time is the time the process started, tty is the terminal the process is running on, the time is the amount of time the process is taken up on the cpu, and cmd of course is the command or the actual name of the process itself. Even more options are displayed when you use the ps command with the l option. For example, f is the flag, where 4 would be the root user. s is the process state. s for sleeping when a process is waiting, r when the process is running, z would be a zombie process waiting to be killed, and t a process that's being traced. uid is the user id, pid is the process id, p pid is the parent process id, c is the cpu utilization by the process, pri is the process priority where 0 is the highest, 127 is the lowest, ni is the nice value where negative 20 is the highest and 19 is the lowest, ADDR is the process memory address, SC is the size of the process and memory, WCHAN is what the process is waiting for while sleeping, TTY the terminal, time the amount of time the process is taken on the CPU, and finally CMD the name of the command or process itself. And one of the basic tools um, most commonly used for controlling processes is simply the PS command for process. If I just type in PS, I get a basic process ID or PID. The TTY is run on, remember there are seven. Um, you know, I can do all F1 through F6 for uh, a command prompt and Alt F7 for X windows or GUI. Um, you know, the time um, in this case that the process is taken on the CPU and the command that's running. So in this case, it's the born again shell and the process command is, is all I have. Now, I can bring up a listing of options. I'll just type in PS and I can, you know, pull up a man page or even if I put in bad syntax, like a couple of asterisks. It'll give me a list of switches and things. And usually when I use the process command, sort of my most favorite switches to pass on, I'll use A for all. Um, I'll use U for user oriented, which kind of you know makes the format nice. Um, and I'll use X, okay? And you know, in this case, uh, processes without the controlling TTYs don't really necessarily care about the TTYs. A lot of times I just I'm looking for a particular process or something. But let's let's take a look at some of these options here. So, um, you know, first off, if I do PSA, you know, th that'll give me a list of all the processes running across different TTYs. And PSU, in this case, notice how that kind of formats things nicely: the process ID, the user, percentage of CPU, the memory, and so forth, all the way across. PSX, and then if I do my favorite here, PSAUX. It's gonna be a list of all processes formatted nicely for you know the user for user output and just kind of you know skipping a few of the options there like TTY terminal. Or I might pipe it to less. So if I do that then I can kind of scroll through and look at my PIDs, figure out what's using my CPU, the memory, you know, start time, CPU time, which commands are doing what. So that, that's one common method of using PS. Um, we'll go through just a few more of those switches. So if I wanted to display processes with full options and a little bit more info, I could do PS with the F option. That just gives me a little bit more info. Again, if I just go through this, this first part is the user ID, who's running the process. This is the PID, the process ID. And later when we couple this with the kill command, we'll need to know the PID for any process to be able to kill it or to send it to the background or the foreground sometimes, depends on you know, what you do with that. 
The PPIB would be the parent process ID. What happens is in the born shell, the, you know, the born again shell in this case, Bash, whenever you launch a process or a program, it basically you know, goes into a wait state and creates another shell. And that shell will turn around and launch that program. And then when it's done, that shell has, you know, the child shell has its own built in kill command, it kills itself. And then it goes back to the parent or the parent process ID. And it's, you know, the wait function is, you know, then complete. And then the parent process ID will kind of give the cursor or the console back. So in other words, just when I did this, right, when I do ps-f, if I did that, now I get the cursor or the console back when the process command is done doing what it needs to do. So user ID, in this case, um, the process ID, the parent process ID PPID. Um, the next option is the amount of CPU utilization. In this case, you know, it's negligible, what's being used. Um, S time is the time it started. TTY is the terminal. Time is the, you know, in this case, the uh, the time that the processes have taken up on the CPU, which again, it's negligible. And then following the command itself. So just the born again shell and the process command right now. Um, you know, not counting background daemons and things that are running in the background. Those are just commands that I actually launched. <clears throat> now, in addition to processes, there are daemons running in the background on any given system. Not programs that I've launched per se from this terminal, but just you know, services and things running in the background. If whatever the for whatever I might be doing could be you know FTP service or Apache 2 or something like that. You know, just all kinds of daemons and things running in in the background. To list that, it would be the dash E option. And if I did that, look at all of the daemons now. And it's considerably more output than just listing the running processes that I started. You know, and you can look at the process ID there. But and if I wanted to get a bit more uh, information there, I'll pass in the you know the U command, format it for the user and. All right, so again, I'm just looking for daemons and things. I don't want to see, you know, notice root. A lot of these are root, and in Ubuntu, you know, I don't really have access. I mean, yeah, but through sudo I do, but something run as root, that's just a daemon or a process that was started at boot. I didn't really launch that or start that. So a lot of these are just automated. They start at boot time, and then not till I get down to here, when I look at some things under C Germany, you know, those may be actual processes that I started. Even then, you know, the Genome Desktop and X Windows and things like that. A lot of those were started automatically at logon. So we're just, you know, there, there's so many command line options to the process command. There's so many different ways of, of displaying information. So, um, you know, maybe you just want to figure out a, I mean, yeah, you can always pull up a man page on it or just look at the command line switches. But maybe you want to remember just a few that are the most useful to you. Um, Let's say I wanted to display all processes and daemons. Remember, E was daemons, and then F would be processes. So that might be a useful command there if, if you're looking for a particular process. Um, if I want to list more information, I can do PS-L, which will give me even more information on a process. Um, if I do that, then this first column here, the F stands for a flag. Uh, and, you know, in this case, if it's four, then that's the root user. In this case, zero being mean. Then the next one here, um, S is the process state. And there are several states possible. S for sleeping, R for running, um, Z for a zombie state. In a zombie state, the process is waiting for the parent to release it. T, that process could be stopped, you know, or it could be being traced by another process. Um, or W, the process has no contents in memory. So several different options there under state. Um, the UID 1000, again, that's, you know, the group of the user running the process. PID is the same, the process ID. PPID is the same, that's the parent process ID. Um, C is still the CPU utilization. PRI is the process priority. So sort of the, the level of niceness that it's running under. Um, now, in the Unix world or Linux world, the lower, you know, the priority that the the higher the priority, in other words. So in other words, zero is the highest, and 127 would be the lowest in terms of priority. The nice value, and if that's zero, then they both have you know the default nice value, whatever they were launched under. But if that were negative 20, 
you know, the lower the number, it has a much greater chance of gaining a higher priority. And I say chance, not guaranteed, but in a time slicing fashion, as it shares CP cycles with other daemons and processes, if that were nice, the negative 20 would have a higher priority. On the other hand, if that were a positive 19, um, it would have a much lower chance of, of getting a high priority. All right, so the priority itself is different from the actual nice value, which you know it is related to or does affect the priority. And again, we'll take a look at that in greater detail in a moment. We're just going through the basics of the process command right now. Um, let's look at the next field. The address is the memory address of the process. Okay, and then the next field is the size of the process and memory. WCHAN is what the process is waiting for while sleeping. Again, the TTY is the terminal, and time is the time the process is taken on the CPU, and command is the individual command process. Um, so just you know, kind of looking at all of those different possibilities or switch values with the PS command. And then the other possibility is you know you can get a lot of information. And you might compare this to the Windows Task Manager. To filter a daemon or process from any listed with the PS command, pipe the output to grep and search for a specific string. It could be a program or a daemon by name. Um, but how do you filter that information when you're looking for only a specific subset? <laughs> Sometimes it's overwhelming what you can get, you know, return from the process command. And that's where you want to use piping and couple it with the grep command. So I might use the switch here, and I might use the pipe symbol, and let's say I just want to find processes related to genome. So I can pipe it and pass in the string value for genome. And then I just get processes related to genome. All right, um, let's say on the other hand that, um, I'm going I'm to go ahead and launch a process real quick. So I'm going to let me go ahead and do Alt F2. I'm just going to launch gedit. Let me do gedit real quick. All right, so that process is running. And I could look for it this way, but that's a whole lot of feedback. So, you know, I could scroll up and, and eventually find it there, but um, let's couple that with the grep command. So PS, AUX and G edit okay and so here I have two processes and this is the actual G edit that's running and this is the grep process that's looking for the process itself per se remember that this over here is the PID or the process ID and in a moment we're going to take a look at the kill command and how that works 